Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're looking at the Conquest X-30, which was based off of the X-29 fighter craft design that was popular back in the 80s. Um, the Conquest X-30 was first released in the United States in 1986. It was included, or it included, I'm sorry, uh, the pilot Slipstream. It was also sold in 1987 and unfortunately discontinued in 1988. Okay, so we have a wonderful view of Slipstream. Uh, it's actually a really nice figure for, for a pilot. I'm, I'm not really going to lie there. Uh, I do remember having a copy of Slipstream somehow. Some reason, I, I have no idea because I, I just really don't know. Um, I want to say at some point, maybe I picked up a used copy of this thing. Um, it is a wonderful take on the X-29, but the X-30 Conquest uh, here on Yojo, we have a wonderful front view, and you see all the different, uh, boy, my mind is not working exactly on how you really want to, uh, you know, the tail fins and all that stuff, and then, we, of course, we have our uh, fins in the front here, uh, I want to say ailerons, but I might be wrong here. Uh, my aeronautical is not very up to par. So uh, and here we have a nice rear view. Uh, and you see the nice, uh, you know, we have our missiles. We have a couple bombs here. Of course, the engine exhausts. And a nice side view. And they have the tiger, the, the uh, well, the shark maw, uh, essentially, uh, here in the front, which is wonderful. I, I've always liked that on, on planes. Um, and the landing gear, you know, it did fold up and go inside, so that it, it looked very nice and sleek when it was all up. And I'm sure we're going to get a nice picture of this. Uh, and I remember listening when they were talking about the X-29, which is the same reason. Here it is. All that landing gear just folds up real nicely inside there. Like I said, we have some bombs, some missiles. Um... But the nose was so long, which was uh, kind of talked about at the time because they needed a bunch of computers. And computers being back in 1980s compared to what they are today, um, they took a lot, a, a lot more room. You know, we take for granted. I mean, we have computers in our pockets that are probably as powerful as what we had back in the 80s. <laughs> but it is interesting, and it's it's it is a nice looking bird. Uh, that got added into the whole G.I. Joe line. All right, and then we had some engine covers here. So this is the top. So this is a soap from the canopy. So we have engine covers here, so you can always have your Joes working on the vehicles. Here's our engine covers, our rear fins, our front fins, our bombs, and, of course, our missiles here. And I know I'm going to be saying, saying wrong uh kind of uh, wording for what some of the stuff is. I, I fully acknowledge that. Uh, some, sometimes my mind is right on fire and we can say this, and other times I'm just just kind of babbling here a little bit. And it is what it is. Nice back art for the box. And I can't remember how much this thing would have gone for. I guess we're going to find out here shortly. And we have one last picture. And here again, this is where I usually was trying to get a lot of the information from so I could kind of get something somewhat close to what we have. So Sunbow did have, have it in there. Um, being honest, I just don't really remember offhand what episode it was in. There again, I know I don't have all the episodes uh, readily available. So, And then this is from the DIC. Which makes more sense from the time frame. Here we are in the action force, so that'd be in the UK. All right, so the Conquest multi role high performance fighter. Okay, weight is 24,000 pounds. Gross weight is 31,000 pounds, fully loaded. Maximum speed is 1,600 miles per hour, which equates roughly to Mach 2.42. Range maximum load, or, uh, let's see, we have a 1,200 mile radius. Armament, it has two 
meter Vulcan cannons and 700, <clears throat> 750 rounds in each cannon, which is not a lot because uh, I know I've said it before, but, you know, like in World War II, they would have like a 1,000 rounds or somewhere close to there, and they talked about only like 15 seconds worth of uh, pulling a trigger before you're out of ammo. Okay, and ordnance-wise, we have the capability of carrying up to 7,000 pounds on 11 external hardpoints. Uh, variably configured loads possible for roles of fighter, attack, bomber, or long-range interceptor aircraft. Um, I'm going to take this from what I've heard on uh, the differences between, like, uh, um, the F-14 Tomcat, which for G.I. Joe would be the Sky Striker, and the... Um, the Hornet, uh, F-18 Hornet, I believe. So um, F-18 Hornet, I believe, was a um, big A in, for attack and um, like a small I. Uh, it was better at a ground support or whatever. The F-14, sorry, Sky, Sky Striker, because the way it was designed, it can track multiple aircraft out there. So it was a small A. Yes, it could do attack, so ground assault and stuff like that for support for ground forces. But it was really a, a big interceptor. Um, it was really meant to be able to control the skies. Um, how this was originally going to be, I really don't know. Um you know, we can always kind of do a, a mixed bag here, but quite often you'll excel at one more than the other. So exactly how this one would fit in, I'm going to say it might be a little bit better as a ground support, but it can also do uh, anti-fighter craft. Uh, so for being an interceptor aircraft, um, kind of like how the uh, Hornet is. So, you know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, anybody that has a lot more information on that, please let me know. Um, it is interesting, um, you know, to, to learn that later on. And, uh, you know, f pilots, you know, that, that are flying these, you know, they, they themselves recognize the role superiority where things are better. Um, tactical Arms Compendium. Oh, that's on my screen. It's way too small for me to read, and I'm sorry. Um, here we have Paint by the Numbers. It's always nice to see stuff like that for, you know, because this is meant for kids. I mean, as an adult, it still intrigues me. Um, and then here's our, our commercial spot that they, they have this still here on yojo.com. Okay. Um, doesn't really say much in variations, although looking down here, it looks like there are some different versions of this. And I do want to say, I think there was a Python Patrol version of this. So 1986, then we have 1989, which is the Python Patrol. So that's what I was thinking. And then we go back down, and now we have a green version of the Conquest in 98, 2003. Um, that's a different kind of... Uh, camouflage on there and then we get back in 2008 back to the original and in 2009 uh, we have a new Python patrol look for it so um, you know I don't have I know it, it, it's just retaking the same mold and just recoloring it but I really don't have any issues when they did that because you know it can bring the same same love and enjoyment of the same fighter craft or same vehicles or whatever, and it brings it over to one side or the other. Uh, when you we look at the VAMP and the, um, my mind's not working yet, uh, <laughs> Cobra's, Cobra's Jeep, it's the same mold. It's just different uh, weapon systems on the back end. So, And I think I've talked about that in the past where, you would almost think for like Cobra that you would have 
you would spend more money on like a rack you could throw into a truck or a Jeep or something that would control your weapon systems. And then you could buy almost anything off the shelf that has roughly the right size uh, truck bed or something. And it just makes it so much easier and a lot cheaper. So that's my viewpoint on that. All right. So as we look at the Conquest X30 uh, and bringing it into our G.I. Joe Star Wars universe, right? Um, of course, this is going to be at Starfighter scale. It is 48.1 or 48 feet, one inch or however you want, or roughly about 15 meters long. Uh, has a crew of one, zero passengers, although... You know, if you want to have a trainer version of this, of course, we're going to have to probably increase the length here. Um, <clears throat> passengers, I have zero. Cargo capacity is 45 kilograms. Cover is full. Uh, I gave it a space of eight because, like I've said in, on some of the other ones, if we're bringing this into a Star Wars universe, okay, um, I don't have hyperdrive in here. But one of the things I do have is just simply saying, why wouldn't we then make these starfighters? Um, so we could actually take off just like how we see the X-Wings, the Y-Wings, and all that. So they can literally just kind of lift up off the, the ground with the repulsor lift, uh, or if you want to call it A-Grav, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Star Wars usually calls it repulsor lift technology. Um but that way we can just kind of land it wherever we want. And it works out really well. <clears throat> uh, but we still would keep, in my mind, the wheels because we're here on Earth. And, you know, if we have a breakdown of something that we're not really used to, that way, you know, we can do a typical landing. All right. I gave it a maneuverability of 4D. Uh, max speed is going to be Mach 1.6. Now, that's... Interesting because I thought when I was looking at it, it said it was actually at um, 2.4. So somewhere I have a discrepancy. So we're going to change this. Um, we're going to put it at 2.4. 2.4. And I'm going to quick take a peek here because... Where did we just see? We just saw that. All right. Um, 1,600 miles per hour, Mach 2.4. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's write that write that in here because you know my, my mind's not going to remember. Uh, pH. And I should probably bracket that because that way we have an idea. There. Okay. Now I gave it a body strength of 3D plus 1. Um, with the forward wings in that, and as I kind of move this around here a little bit. With the forward wings, I know that they had talked about at the time um, having to reinforce things or whatever to try and get the wings strong enough. Um so I figured a, a 3D plus one would probably be pretty good. All right, so we have heavy repeating cannon uh, front, and it's going to do 5D damage. Now, actually, because when we're reading the card, and I don't know, we're going to put this as two. Oops. <laughs> All right. Two heavy repeating cannons, and... I should do this. I keep forgetting to do this, but uh, make sure that we list that they are fire linked. Um, and then I'm going to up the damage a little bit because if we have two of them, we get to up the damage. All right. And then looking at how it, it's outfitted right now, we have four long range air to air missiles, um, starfighter scale, and Fire control is 4D, and we have damage of 70. Now, what I don't have in here is um, let's see. So this will mess things up here later on. But 
we're going to put this in. All right. We don't want four long long range. We do want two. And I better kind of move this over. We want our bombs on here. So these aren't going to be long range missiles. Um, so <clears throat> I guess the big question is um, what kind of bombs here? Um, why don't we say um, I'm I'm making this up as we go. So laser guided. Um, and for simplicity, simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call medium bombs. Throwing that in there. Uh, Starfighter scale, fire control of 40. Actually, why don't we knock that down Oops, to a 3D. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and damage... Tell me right here. I put a D where I need to be. That's my mind is not working so well this morning. Okay, uh, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out if I should do this as a 70 or if I should up it. Something tells me I should probably up it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna up that. Um, actually, laser guided because usually we have someone there or whatever. We're gonna do the fire control up a little higher. That way, if we have to scale down to something we can we can scale that down and then we won't lose as much in the fire control all right so i think that's what we're going to do we're going to do do it like this um but that adds in our two bombs here so we have our two bombs we're going to call them laser guided um <clears throat> actually you know what we can even do a little bit better fire control um here with ground support Oops. And then what we'll do is we'll do 3D uh, from fighter. There. Okay. Uh, because quite often, you know, you'll have um, infantry or somebody on the ground that's actually using a laser for the ground support to say that's the target. And when we have that, I believe that they do have a lot better chance of actually hitting the exact target. Without that, then we're basing it off of whatever the fighter was doing at the time as they're flying, so then we're gonna knock that down a little bit. So I think that makes it a little bit more representative to um, a little bit of the real world aspect of it. Um, and I think that really kind of kind of gets in there. Now. Because, like I've said, this is bringing everything in, in here, and I don't think I've ever touched on any of this as of yet. But one thing I'm going to say is, you know, if you wanted to then take this and then put it, I mean, just like TIE Fighters don't have hyperdrive. Doesn't mean that somebody can't modify and throw a hyperdrive in there. Are you going to have a backup or a uh, nav computer or whatever probably not and it'll probably just have like listed maybe two hyperdrive points so you can get to your mission and come back or something like that so just throwing that out there in case you know anyone wanted to think of it in those regards can we bring this fully into star wars i don't see why you couldn't but if we want to leave this as a G.I. Joe with a Star Wars background to say this is how they're getting the technology, which is where I've been going with this, or uh, I've proposed a couple different other ways of doing this to say this is from a uh, the Old Republic during the Clone Wars, a separate army going against the Separatists or something. You know, we could do it in that regard. Or you could fast forward it to well after and it's somebody else's military creation or, or whatever um, for protecting their planet or um, their own forces. Um, you know, because there's plenty of other planets out there. I don't think everything's going to be created by uh, Corellian uh, Engineering uh, and, and the like. 
there's got to be a lot of other planets making their own stuff and whatever else. So I think there's a, a lot of possibilities out there. Um, and remember, we're creating a Earth-like kind of planet for all this to go on. Um, and as we're doing this, I'm trying to come up with more things for this as well. Uh, so we can kind of run this as a six Joe role playing game. At some point, I think we're we're going to try and run this a little bit. So, uh, and I'm trying to to mess with things. Uh, how do we how do we really go about doing this? Um, and just trying to figure out who should shouldn't be in there. You know, do we keep it as the classic, having all the classic Joes in there, or do we say this is later on and they've kind of retired or you know, you could do it in, in one of many ways. And I think keeping all the Joes would be really representative and feel a lot more like G.I. Joe. But they're, again, you know, saying that they unfortunately had to retire or whatever would be okay-ish too. But now it feels like you're kind of lessening it a little bit. But, you know, you could do it one of other or one of a number of ways. You know, we could always create our own little Joe Force or small sub team of G.I. Joe. And always being able to have um, cameos of some of the other guys giving us missions or something like that. So that's always a big possibility. We'll figure that out whenever we get there. Um, with that, though, uh, it's it's a lot of fun bringing this to you. Um, I hope you enjoy the series. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see.